Hi everybody, um, it is uh, July 20th, that means it's the 21st day I've been on the road. Three weeks ago I left Birmingham. Uh, as I mentioned on the previous video, I have spent 20 consecutive nights in a tent in, at 17 tent sites in 12 different states. And um, on that 20th night I hit a brick wall, got here to Albany and found that I just had to check myself into a psychiatric unit. Actually, no, I mean the day's in. Um, and it was, it's been like heaven to have a bed, a hot shower, and a bathroom that is private and just mine. That's one of the tough things for me about camping is that 20 straight days of public bathrooms, 20 straight days of like brushing your teeth while hearing bodily things go on in stalls. It's just, uh, whew, it's, it's, uh, I'll tell you what, it's like I've been a refugee. I, 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 I have, I've been a refugee. A refugee with a credit card and a three month vacation. Anyway, um, wanted to tell you a story uh, about last night. Um, I um, got I went down the street to this little place called Maggie's to, to get a sandwich and uh, to have a beer. Sat at the bar there and um, there were two guys sitting next to me and they were talking of sports and gambling and then one of the guys left leaving the other one who was to my immediate left and he being a very talkative type turned and began to speak to me. And as I looked at him, one of the first things that occurred to me was I thought, now this guy looks like Billy Bob Thornton. I mean, he really did. And I thought to myself, I, I would love to parade him uh, in front of the two rangers uh, in Missouri and you, my friend Mark at the rhinoceros in Missoula and say, now take a look, there's Billy Bob Thornton. And so we're talking and two or three minutes into our conversation, Maggie comes over <laughs> And she says to Ed, the guy, he's a regular, the guy I'm talking to, he's a regular, she says, Ed, this guy looks like he could be your brother. <sighs> anyway, um, Ed, I want to talk about Ed. Uh, it became apparent to me that Ed was uh, a troubled kind of soul, but he was, there was something deep down inside of him that was sweet, but he, it was also dark. Um, and so we're talking in this conversation and and at one point he says something like, yeah, my probation officer doesn't like for me to drink, but to hell with him. And that, you know, got my attention. So as gently as I could, I sort of said, oh, uh, you got into some trouble, did you? Uh, and he said, uh, a little incident with violence. And I'm thinking, okay. So I try to steer the conversation away from there, and to his credit, in my view, one of the things about Ed is that he's not one of these people who just wants to talk about himself. He shows a genuine interest in the people to whom he is talking. And so he starts asking me questions about myself, and uh, somehow or another we get around to the fact that I lived in Africa for a, few, a couple of years. And um, he asked me where I lived, and I say, Kananga. And he perks up and says, oh, the Kasai provinces. I've been there. Uh, that's unusual. You never meet anybody who's been to the Kasai provinces. And I said, really, what took you to the Kasai uh, provinces? And he said, the war. And I'm thinking, the United States did not involve itself in any of those wars at that time, at least not overtly. And I said, were you with the CIA? And he said, no, I was a mercenary. And so he tells me the story about how he has been, was a troubled child. His father was a high-ranking military officer in the army, stationed in Germany most of the, of, for most of his youth. And he can never please his father. He could never please his father. He tried to, he, he got, I guess he got dishonorably discharged from the army and winds up being a soldier of fortune in the mid and late 70s all throughout southern Africa. Um, tells me he scaled the water tower in, in Kananga 
which is no small feat, and said that he did it on a bet and he stood up there and thought, this is the perfect place for a sniper. And then he tells me that's what he was. He was a sniper. And he does not brag, but he essentially tells me that he has killed quite a few people. And as the more he drinks, the more emotional he becomes. And I can tell that this guy is carrying the most enormous burden around with him. And, um, I mean, I see tears welling in his eyes. And um, at one point, the minister therapist in me says, you should write a book. And he says, there are too many places I just can't go. It hurts too bad. And the minister therapist in me thinks about saying, well, you should pursue your fears and then you can conquer them. But I'm thinking, then he'll administer some therapy on me if I push this too far. Uh, and, uh, you know, his probation officer might not like what he does to me. So I let it go. But um, in the end, um, it was time for me to leave. I could tell that Ed was in for a long night and because I needed to get moving the next day. I wasn't prepared for a long night. So I left and he gave me a really strong handshake and thanked me and that was a kind of significant time. Which leaves me believing that, you know, this trip is unfolding for a purpose that I don't quite get yet. But, um, you know, I run into these people I hear these stories and they somehow or another touch and move me and that ain't all bad.